Let's get ourselves connected. Gotta get yourself connected. Gotta get connected. A lot of people are going wireless now. We're going to talk about wireless security with Sean Walker. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. So uh, we've uh, got a D-Link wireless and router, so the, the latest and greatest as far as speed. A lot of people don't turn the security on. Absolutely. And that's a, with, with N right now, because it has so much larger range and can go farther, that's a big problem because now more people have access to your wireless network. So even more neighbors can see what you're doing. Absolutely. So let's go through the uh, the setup here. And uh, we've got a D-Link, but uh, in many cases, this is a very similar setup process for the other brands. All the same settings apply. Because this is a standard, um, all the, the same security features usually are there. Yes. OK, so let's uh, start off. And typically, they always have uh, some type of wizard that kind of walks you through it. Exactly. Something that, that can take somebody that has a moderate level of knowledge and walk them through what you have to set up. So we're going to start off with the start off going through the wizard. And the first thing that it asks you to do is to put in a network name. It's also called an SSID. Yes. So in this case, we're just going to call it Get Connected. And it's better to uh, not use the default one. Correct. You see that an awful lot. When you turn on your uh, your laptop and it scans for, for networks, you see an awful lot of Linksys or D-Link or, or some the default. Exactly. Yeah. So we have a couple options beneath here. Um, it's asking us to automatically assign a network key, and this basically turns on encryption. So we have two options beneath turn on the key. One is to as manually assign a network key, which we want to do in this case. And then the second thing is to use WPA encryption. There's two main types of encryption. There's WEP and WPA. So we're going to use that one. And that one's better. It is better. Okay. Um, the reason is WEP is static. So when you set it up, it always uses that. And that basically gives people an opportunity to hack it. Okay. With WPA, it has the opportunity to change those keys on a rotating basis. And you can set up how often you want those keys to rotate. And it's asking us for a wireless security password. Um, you can use just normal text. That's not a big deal. Um, However, it has to be a minimum of eight characters. But you can make it as long as you want. Um, and from a key perspective, especially a rotating key perspective, the longer you make it, the more options it has. So in this case, we're just going to call it Get Connected Again. Typically, you wouldn't want to use something like that because that's easy no. to guess. So yeah, you want to use a combination of letters and numbers. Exactly. In this case, for this purpose, we'll just do something easy. And so we're going to save that. So now, basically, this has got some level of security happening, so it's not going to be easy for my neighbor to see uh, where I'm surfing. Exactly. So yeah. this is the stuff that the wizard helps you set up. Now, there's a few more things that you can actually go through and do, which make it even harder. OK. The first thing I'd recommend that you do is to change the channel. Okay. Um, every single, well, I shouldn't say every single, but almost every device that's out there comes preset for channel 6. What the best thing to do is to turn your wireless card on and do a scan. Take a look at the channels that are out there and find one that isn't being used. You're going to get a w way better signal and way more speed because you're going to have less interference. So that's the biggest thing. So the further away from other people's channels, the better. Right. So the one thing to remember is the channels actually overlap. So channel 6, for example, actually takes up channels 5 and 7, too. Oh. So to get away and, and not interfere with channel 6, you've got to at least use channel 4. So at least two away. Exactly. Another thing here is 802.11 mode. So this basically allows any type of network device to connect that uses those standards. In this drop-down, you actually have the option to make it less. So you can say only N devices or G and N. Okay. Now the advantage there is the less different standards you use, the less overhead that you're going to have. Got it. So if you only have N devices, you're going to get way better throughput. Okay. Transmission rate, I would leave this to automatic. And what that's going to do is based on the, the RF conditions or the signal conditions, it's going to choose the absolute best. Channel width, you have two options here, 20 megahertz and, or auto, 20 and 40. Um, when you change it to that, it's actually going to use even more channel space. Okay. Right? So if you have a, a really clear spectrum, you can definitely go up to, to um, 40 yeah. or the auto setting, which will go either one. This next one here is probably the biggest one that is going to help with security. If you change this visibility status to invisible, it never broadcasts your network name. So when I turn on my laptop and I'm searching for networks, I won't be able to see it. Right, and you probably see that an awful lot now. When you go there, there's, it knows there's a network there, but it's blank. Okay. So you have to enter that. Got it. So when you try to connect that network, it's going to say, give me your SSID. Which gives it an even higher level of security. Exactly. Cool. And that's the bulk of it. In a larger enterprise-style environment, like a business, you can actually set up different encryption keys for every person. So uh, some great tips there. Uh, obviously, set up security in the first place, but go in and manually edit it, and uh, it'll give you even more security. Absolutely. Sean Walker, our network guru, talking all about setting up wireless network routers.